Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Hello fam, welcome back to the African Diaspora News Channel. I am Gil Zalalem, bringing you this report. Today's report comes from Libya. Gaddafi's son, Saif al-Islam is now running for the election officially. Last time I reported that he was thinking about running but now he is going to run for the presidency and you know there's so many contradictory stories coming out of Libya. Well I take that back not from Libya but mainstream media and we all know how the mainstream media goes but for first let me show you a snippet of what the mainstream media is saying and I'll tell you what the Libyans on the ground are saying. Moving on now and the son of Libya's former leader Muammar Gaddafi has registered as a candidate for December's presidential elections. Saif al-Islam Gaddafi said he wants to restore unity after a decade of conflict since his father's downfall. The 49-year-old is wanted by the International Criminal Court for war crimes. Ibrahim Freyhardt is an associate professor of conflict resolution at the Doha Institute and joins us live now. Thanks for joining us, uh, Ibrahim. First of all, this is a man that was supposed to be executed at one point and now he's registering as a presidential candidate. It certainly is a significant turnaround. Will he have any support? Well, he definitely benefited from the chaos, uh, the security uh, situation that's in disarray in Libya. And that uh, ended up actually in uh, releasing him in 2017 uh, from prison. Though he had, uh, he, he received a death sentence um, in 2015, and he is still uh, wanted by the International Criminal Court. Now, whether he has support, he does actually have some support, not a lot. He has some support among the former regime uh, loyalists, um, and also he has uh, some support within some certain tribal forces. Uh, they're not much. Uh, they're, they're, it's not a strong support. They are in places like uh, Beni Walid and Tarhuna and, and in some other tribal forces. Uh, I don't think he has any chance of winning this election. I don't think he, uh, he himself thinks that he has a chance. But for him, I think this is a political message that he is trying to send, that he is becoming uh, again back to the political scene and part of the game, and also that he can run for the elections and he is, he is uh, uh, ignoring the uh, International Criminal Court's uh, uh, request for, to be, for him to be handed over to the, to the ICC. So that's, I think, the political message is what we're seeing behind it, and uh, he is doing it uh, now. As you saw, uh, the mainstream media is saying that they, he doesn't have a lot of support, and you know the ICC wants him for crime and all that stuff, and they're basically saying that not a lot of people want him. But in the same video, I went to the comment section and I tried to see nowadays, I don't just take the news. I have to hear it from the people on the ground, from the people that know the information more, you know, after yeah, what Ethiopia is going through right now, it's only fair, right? So I went through some of the comment sections of these videos that the mainstream media has been talking about, uh, Saif al-Islam, the son of Gaddafi former president of Libya, they were saying how we really want him. Of course, this does not mean everybody wants him, but the people that I was able to um, read from or see online, they were saying how they really want him to come to power because, you know, they regret um, what happened to Gaddafi and the way, if you remember the mainstream media and the U.S. president then, um, they really run the story that Gaddafi is this 
horrible person. Don't get me wrong, he was a dictator. I, I'm not even gonna lie about that, but he also did so many good things for Libya as well as for Africa. He was a Pan-Africanist and he wanted change and he did not want us to depend on the West and that is precisely why they did not want him. They worked with the locals there and you know, you know the, the rest, the, even the way he was taken out of power, it was just so horrible. That image of him being dragged and I don't, I don't, I don't want to talk about that, but it was just horrible how he was removed from power and killed finally. So with all that information and knowledge, now current day Libyans, not all of them, as I said, the ones that I have seen, they are ready to embrace his son because they understand that his son would probably will have more of his dad's information and how his dad run Libya. So they are hopeful that he will be more or less like his dad and he's going to help Libya because Libya right now after Gaddafi is in chaos. It's really, really sad to see where Libya is right now. So People seem to be celebrating it, but do you know who is not happy? Some of the elders. They are not happy. They were actually saying that they are going to boycott this election because they don't want him to run. Who do you think the elders are? The ones that helped the Western world remove Gaddafi. Those, those same people are not happy that the son is running. So with all the information I gathered, I believe his son, I can be wrong, his son Saif might be the best hope for Libyans. I can be wrong though. Anyways guys, let us know down below what your thoughts are about this story. I am Ungir Zalalem. I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and download the African Diaspora News Channel app. Now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now, those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, Seven Steps to Decolonize the Mind, and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on Amazon.com.